just because you are in church doesn't mean you're not going to be taken advantage of by a pastor. I don't pray. I don't know what to say to God after what happened to me. We want to see miracles happening like we start working for it. It's so absurd. Here in South Africa, there's been several high-profile court cases featuring disgraced pastors. There's been charges of rape, fraud, and money laundering. As a church-going South African myself, I want to know why is this happening and what is being done about it. Lubanzi, not her real name, was raped by her pastor, a man she trusted. One day he started asking me about my sex life and my HIV status. Then he made me a drink. He said it would help my heart burn, but it tasted sour and made me sleepy. I woke up naked in his bed. I started crying and asked him what had happened. He told me to pull myself together. A while later, I realized I was pregnant. When I went to tell him, he raped me again. He said if I told anyone, they would never believe me because he's an anointed man of God. A lot of the sexual abuse in churches are created and are done by uh, pastors and prophets who are, who are false, who are fake. Solomon Ashams is originally from Nigeria. He's part of the movement against abuse in churches. He's been raising awareness of these issues for years. There are so many horrible abuses that I've encountered. You know, I've encountered a 14-year-old uh, who was allegedly raped by a prophet. I've come across people who have lost money. Uh, I've and, and they give all their money to the prophet and now they live in a garage. All the abuses are continental. You get it across the continent. In Lagos, Nigeria, the same story in Accra, Ghana. Uh, but being in South Africa for me, myself, you know, and looking at why people are flocking to these churches, uh, I see there's, I, there's a very sense of hopelessness. Hopelessness in life. Uh, uh, your life has no meaning. You're trying to get meaning to your life. Uh, there's also desperation and trying to get out of poverty. <laughs> Well, this issue is so big, even political parties are getting involved. Today we are in the area of Social Gouve, where a local pastor is in court for allegedly raping boys from his own congregation. We want to prevent this from happening in the near future, for the pastors to see that we are watching them, not only the pastors, but each and every person who's doing this kind of things, raping our children. These pastors come from other places, they erect tents and suddenly they perform miracles. And we want to see miracles happening like we start working for it. It's so absurd. Wherever you are, wherever you are. Self-proclaimed prophet Shepard Bushiri, a Malawian with a vast business empire, is currently on trial in Pretoria, charged with fraud and money laundering. A charge he denies. The BBC went to meet him in 2018. He claimed that through him, God could cure HIV. One time I called all doctors in Pretoria to come and they brought HIV people. They tested the people before prayer and I prayed for them and they tested again. I'm talking about doctors and the people are negative. Who have the hands, who have the hands, who have the hands, who have the hands? Receive your deliverance, receive your deliverance. Freedom of religion is ingrained in South Africa's constitution, making it difficult to legislate against controversial churches. But there is one organization, the CRL Rights Commission, trying to hold them to a higher standard. The first problem is that as a nation, we don't know who's a religious leader, where they are based, what they are doing, what their history is. You could be a pedophile from jail and you could start up a church. In this country, doctors have the health professionals, counsel, lawyers have law society. Every profession in this country, we are regulated by your peers. We are saying this thing called Christianity needs to be regulated as well. But not everybody feels regulation is the best way forward. We praise and lift up our God King. Pastor Shimiko too is concerned that regulation would violate constitutional rights and favor the bigger, better known churches. The zero conditions uh, uh, recommendation is naive in the list. Because what you're saying, you're seeing a situation where a secular government is trying to determine which preacher is true and who is false. A secular government which says, I would never give the spiritual or not. What are the tools they have to tell one false preacher from a good preacher? To start with, the very people they have appointed to spare the process, 
Who vetoed the decision? Who, who decided that these are pure preachers? And what was the criteria? I think there's a conversation there that needs to keep going on until we get to a place where we find a common ground in dealing with this issue, a big problem in the church. False prophets and crooked pastors are not the norm here in South Africa, but they are a big problem. It seems that we South Africans are looking for a miracle, an easy fix to our lives. Listening to all the stories I've had while making this film has been depressing. But it's also been promising that good people do care. And hopefully, we can get right back on track.